Hello and welcome to the Heresy Lodge. I am your host, Dylan Cooper, the constant co-host over here. Gavin Franklin. Guys, this week we are here to review the very much anticipated anthology, Shattered Legions. And on top of that, the other half of this episode is coming with a little bit of a special surprise. Yeah, so uh, you will have that in about... 30 minutes or so, so we aren't going to take a lot of time on this book because, well, honestly, the same thing happens in every story, I think. <laughs> it's pretty remarkable. Like, I, I could sum this whole book up in two minutes. <laughs> Not <laughs> it, Probably 35 seconds. Is it that bad? Because I've only, I've been so out of it the past few days. I've only read, I think, the first three stories. I am halfway through, which halfway through gets you to Graham's 150-pager. <laughs> So That's I'm really half. about 75% of the way through. <laughs> but okay. I'll, I'll get into the quick synopsis in just a second. Let's go through our stuff first. As always, hit us up on the Discord. If you're on the Discord, special things can happen. Giveaways. Whatever happens at the end, end of this episode. Who knows? You also get to interact with us and a bunch of cool people. So check it out. You can find that pinned to our Twitter at Heresy Lodge. You can always email us at theheresylodge at gmail.com. You can tweet us. Um, you can fucking ask on YouTube, and I will give you the link. Uh, we also have some sweet merch. I'm currently wearing my sweatshirt and drinking out of my pint glass. Uh, I should be trying to make some hats sometime this weekend as well to add to that. So check it out. It's really cool. It's fun. And you get to support us. And we like support. Because we don't get any at home. <laughs> we support each other. God damn <laughs> right, we do. <laughs> so what are you drinking out of your uh, Heresy Lodge? Well, good, Last sir. Day. I am drinking from Golden Road Brewing Mango Cart Wheat Ale. Love that. I love that. It's, it's great. Really beer. good. Yeah. I uh, Did we record the second half of this first? And I almost opened up my other two drinks here because I was like, oh, this is so yeah. good. I was like, oh, I should probably let myself to one because I still have to talk about this goddamn book. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I'm not drinking today. This is the first time. Um, I've just been super sick all week and I'm not over it yet. Like we were just recording the, the second half and I was like sweating. <laughs> I was sweating too, but it's hot in here. <laughs> no, it's cold in here and I'm like sweating. So I'm like, normally I would have like a hot toddy or something, but. Not this time. It's been the worst sickness I've ever had. Went to the doctor. They tested me for strep, flu, and COVID, right? And strep and flu get done immediately. And they like, yep, you don't have strep or flu. But COVID, you'll know tomorrow. So they called me. They're like, hey, your COVID test is negative. I was like, okay, great. So COVID, strep, and flu are negative. Like, what's the next steps? Like, what do I do? And the person on the phone was like, oh, no, this is just your COVID test. It's like, oh, I get that. But I already did the strep, flu, came back negative. Her response was, great, sir. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you're a pussy. You're fine. <laughs> I know. I was fine. Like, <laughs> it's so frustrating. Dude. No, it's not my problem. See you. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was, like, getting better and everything. I'm like, all right. That's whatever. hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, that's American I, healthcare, baby. Dude, I hate going to the doctor when I'm sick. Like, oh, what do you mean you love going to the doctor? You go like once a month. <laughs> I literally have guys, my kidneys doctor. are failing. I haven't yeah. gone to the doctor in like probably nine months, maybe more. I think the last time I went to the doctor was August. So, Ju I think July. I went in July. So, Every time I go to the doctor when I'm sick, I hate doing that because I've went like two times before in my life, like ever since I was an adult. And they were like, take Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, that's a really good point. Um, but now, like the only reason I go is because like my mom and Katie and Katie's mom are like, you need to go to the doctor. Like, this is serious shit. I'm like, they, they're not going to do anything. <laughs> there was one time I went to urgent care. I had vertigo for literally three days. Like, I could like barely like function. So I get there, like check my ears and they're like, well, just take some ibuprofen. <laughs> like, are you Dude. fucking kidding me? Yeah. That was like 300 bucks. Yeah. 
It's <laughs> like you nuts. Guys, you looked at me for five minutes and told me to take ibuprofen. Bitch, that didn't fix anything. <laughs> <laughs> I still have vertigo. It's so weird. It's almost like if you're like at a certain age, they're just like, it'll it'll work itself out. <laughs> What's your Christ. life insurance like? Eh, no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> I can bill you either way. <laughs> <clears throat> so <clears throat> shattered legions are you ready oh you know i actually enjoyed the first story that pops in here which is medusin from dan abnett all right give me the synopsis uh so this is the one where we are introduced to fuck what is his name yes i know what you're talking about shadrach yeah <clears throat> shadrach medusin and I f- fuck there's someone have else we met Shadrach Medusa? I don't think so I thought we had yeah. all the fucking iron hands just kind of blend together dude so the reason you liked this story more than the rest because it was the first time you've read it like if this story was because like every story is the same so, like, you open up the first story, and you're like, okay, this is okay. And then it's, the further you go on, you're like, oh, this is all the oh, same. Yeah. So, right. gonna, this is the full quick synopsis of the entire book. You ready for this? The Shattered Legions of the Iron Hands, Salamanders, and Raven Guard are all together. They find a beacon. They're like, holy shit. There's people there. They need our help. Raven Guard, maybe it's a trap. Salamander, we should save people. Iron Hand, we must kill everything. So, what do they do? They go. It's a trap. They must get out. Someone dies. Normally the salamander. <laughs> Normally the salamander. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think, like, the funniest book I've ever read is in this, this short. I, I did read, like, the funniest short story. I was, like, laughing at the end of it. I was like, I can't believe somebody fucking wrote this short story. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's someone... There's a really fucking ridiculous name in this first story, which made me wonder if Dan was the one that wrote Scarson Scarsonson, because there's like a Medusin Medusasin. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was like, what the? Oh, I actually texted it to you. Yes, that's right. I remember that. So I was just like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Oh, God, it's going to bother me if I don't find the name. So this short story is all about the power struggle in the Iron Hands after, I don't even know when this is. That's another problem I have with this. I don't know like when this takes place. It's definitely after Ferris Manus' death. Um, They've lost another leader. I don't know who that is. Like all we have of the Iron Hands are a bunch of scattered short stories. So I don't actually know like who's in charge and who's important. Um, I found I the thought, name. What's the name? Goran Gorgensen. Goran Gorgensen. I, I love it. Garson Skarsonson. That would be great. <laughs> That's the yes. true battle we need. So they lost Ferris Manus. They lost this other leader. I don't know who this other leader is. I, I don't... I think he, that was the first captain. Okay, so he died... I don't remember ever reading about him previously. Um, he I was in the, a Fulgrim for like a page. I thought like the ne- the next leader was the dude in um, Angel Exterminatus that was like in a giant heart container. Oh yeah, the Dreadnought. Guy. No, that guy. Oh, was even a Dreadnought. Yeah, he was just they're like we must keep him alive. He's he's the soul of the Legion. Yeah, and then like no the one even knows was. about this guy. <laughs> uh, so you have uh, Scar, not Scar, God damn it, Shadrach. He's <laughs> trying to convince. Basically, what they have like a council of elders who are all dick bags. Yeah, like, although our hands are just dick bags. I'm pretty sure. Fair enough. And Shadrach's like, guys, like I have a really good idea. We should do like what the Raven Guard do. And the Iron Hands disagree with them. And so they run into a situation where one side comes up and the other side comes up and they have to deal with it and 
shit hits the fan and uh, more leadership changes occur within the iron hands, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it was okay for what it was. It was so far the best story in this. I disagree. Oh, boy. I'm excited for which one's your favorite then. Um, so, yeah, but we'll end that on Medusa. Uh, the next one we have is Unforged. This is the best story. No, this <laughs> one's so sorry. fucking stupid. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking amazing. Because, oh my gosh, it's so good. This is the most frustrating part about the Shattered Legions. Is like, they're so, it's not that, it's not just that the Iron Hands are insanely annoying. They're but it so, is also that. Yeah, but they're so stupid. Stupid that they get themselves killed in situations that oh, like hell. a real simple thought process would have saved like all of their lives, but they're so good at dying. One group in particular that's good at dying is the salamanders. They're really good at it. They just always die. So this story is about salamanders who are on Isfahan 5. And they go to look for a beacon, but they think it might be a trap. But they go anyway because they need to save people. Yep, and shit hits the fan. <laughs> it's a trap, but not one that they expected. And the outcome of this, I was laughing so hard, dude. Yeah, it was, it was something. I was like, wow. We always say salamanders die, but... <laughs> them dying this way is just <laughs> cherry on top yeah it's different that is for sure so the next story after that we get immortal duty have you read this one yet uh yeah it's so bad this is the one where there is a guy that is a part of a group of the iron hands called the immortals now this is the best understanding I have of the concept of the Immortals. They did something that pissed off Ferris Manus at some point. Not hard. So he strips them of their rank and makes them Immortals, whose job it is to board ships. I think. Like, instead of him having a dedicated shipboarding group of people that train daily and how to do that he's just like you piss me off go board that ship <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jesus christ which honestly that's kind of their, their strategy anyway most of the time like all the time ferris manis is running his entire thing like a frat party you know what i the more like i read this too like they everyone brings up his fan like every fucking time every second manis not even having like a half of his fucking army there is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. He's so bad. Like we can fucking kill three legions. Fucking watch me. I should have been more master. Fucking my, gets his head chopped off. My dudes are made of fucking metal, bro. <laughs> <laughs> metal. It's fucking sick. It's, I mean, I think it's weird. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, They're like fucking old dreadnoughts. It's neat. They're weird, but it's neat. Listen, this is my plan. Someone pisses me off, I send them to a ship, and if they don't die, I put them in a dreadnought. It's a win, win, <laughs> win. It's like, perfect. So, yeah. He, and this is daring his fan five. He goes out to this, this person. I don't even know who the fuck it is. Galicus. Uh, Galicus. He go, he's an immortal. He boards a world eater ship. He fights some world eaters. Shit hits the fan. And that's the story. Yep, that is it pretty much. So, was that the last one you read? I don't know. Next one is Grey Talon. And it's the one that has the white scars. I read a part of this. I'm not done with this. I'm in the middle of it. Okay. So, let me give myself a quick synopsis here. Uh, this is so the this one follows where the yeah you got Haibu Haibuo it... something like that yeah yeah so he is uh he's one of the scars that betrayed uh, he became part of the um 
Oh, what the hell are they called? It's a fucking white scar's name. Like Javal Manzan or something like that. It's the group of people who Yeah, it's something are Manzan, seeking... Manzan, Moonzan. There's yeah. definitely a Z in there. I gar- I know for a fact there's a Z. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a group of people who are trying to like redeem themselves in Jack Tycon's eyes because they betrayed him, that kind of thing. Yeah. Sagir Mazan. Yep. Sagir Mazan. Nice job. Thank you. I knew the Z was in there for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of the premise of the story without going too deep into it. It's another Shattered Legions, but at least there's White Scars in this one. Yeah, so he's boarding the ship that Yusugi actually used mm-hmm. to get to the White Scars yep. in the book Scars. And if we remember from that story, you know, it's got some iron hands and a salamander who dies <laughs> in scars. <laughs> R.I.P. So there's like, he's dead. I don't know if there's any more salamanders left on that ship, but if I had to guess, they would die if there was. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. All right. Yeah. So that is Great Talon. Next, we get the Keys of Hell. Um, this one's kind of weird. I'll read you the synopsis from the website. Iron Father Creus of the Iron Hand Legion searches for forbidden technology, knowledge known as the Keys of Hell. This follows the Creus is that guy from the other short story that was resing the dead Iron Hands. And this follows that main character that had died in that short story as the one of the guys, because I guess he was actually fairly high up the chain. Prior? Yeah. That's weird. He actually runs into his previous... uh, Fuck, they don't call them brotherhoods. Uh, fuck. Whatever. The Iron Brotherhood things. He was, like, a leader of one of them, and they find him. And they go through this whole, like... Wait, so is this before... The robot short story? No, this is after it. This is the main character from the f- first short story of this. When he died, remember they brought him back to life? As a robot. Yeah. So it's him Zomb- as a He's robot? more of a zombie. They're like zombies. They're dead. Okay, so this is him as a zombie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a story. <laughs> he's looking for the keys of hell. <laughs> I hope that doesn't go any. Why did they have to write a sequel to a short story? <laughs> that was like the worst short story. And it had to be fucking more iron hands. Like, God of damn course. It, why? Okay. Yeah. So the next one is Deeds Endured. Uh, yeah, Thor. Yeah. Let's see. An argument between Salamanders and Iron Hands of the Shattered Legions revealed the key philosophical differences between these loyalists. Um, so yeah, no this shit. follows... It's a fucking struggle for trying to figure out why the goddamn Iron Hands are in charge, because they're all fucking knuckleheads. And the <laughs> Raven Guards sitting there like, please, like, can we just like, strike and then back up and like, kind of let things happen? Maybe be a little bit of pussies? Like, I've read I promise this, this shit works. This yeah, is the same every story time. as Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same shit every time. And they're like, no, no, no. Fuck you. And they're like, oh, wow, that was actually kind of smart. That's literally the same story as Medusa. Yeah, they're all the fucking That's, same that's the same story of like half the shit in Korax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's a deeds and dirt. You also get the full quote of Flesh is Weak because they say Flesh is Weak a hundred times. And then a salamander is like, oh, well, why don't you finish? The sentence is more than flesh is weak. One time I heard Vulcan say the whole thing. And it's like flesh is weak, but deeds are endured or something like that. And he's like, he's what he's saying is like, you need to overcome your flesh. Yada yada yada. I don't know. It's it some fucking philosophical bullshit that I'm like, yeah, our hands are all stupid. They don't know. <laughs> Salamander probably dies. <laughs> I will not confirm nor deny. <laughs> All right, now we get to the noose by David Annandale, who, yep. oh my gosh, please tell me this is not a sequel or prequel or a pre prequel 
to Damnation of Pythos, is it? No, this is a sequel to like, your first short story. So Shadrach Medusin leads the Shattered Legions to war against the Emperor's children. Um, so, I mean, yeah, basically that. They get into a fight with the Third Legion, and they get fucking surrounded because they, guess what? There was a trap, and they're like, eh, fuck it. It's Third Legion. We must kill them. We must all kill them. Yeah, I can imagine, right? Like, there's some <laughs> sort of trap. I knew as soon as he said Emperor's children, like, there's going to be, like, this a sentence in there somewhere. Oh, well, I know we're heading into a dangerous thing, but I can't let the Emperor's children get away. You don't understand the hatred we have towards them. <laughs> and the Raven Guard's I'm like, I'm going to shove uh, more than shards up their ass. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up my awkward face. <laughs> Flesh is weak. But yeah, that is the noose. Um, yeah next one is unspoken this is let's see surviving a starting to the salamander's legion examine their broken nature in the wake of their legions near extinction during the drop site massacre who the salamanders yeah um how was this one you know i feel like i should have read this but maybe i haven't it... oh no i did okay so this one Man, I can't wait to talk about this in the review because it's fucking stupid. Really? Yeah, so this group of salamanders were sent away by um, Vulcan, Vulcan because he had special Terminator suits on this ship. Well, I'll go more in detail in the review because... Wait, like during this time? Yes. You're telling me. They're basically like tank terminator suits like they like fucking like giant missile launchers and like all kinds of fucking guns on them he's like run away we don't want the enemy to get these and then guess what they do they go and fight an enemy <laughs> with like three guys <laughs> i'm like it's like a whole fucking like world eaters army and, like we can fucking take it <laughs> like, okay that makes sense <laughs> so let me get this straight during the time that ferris man has got beheaded the salamanders are getting slaughtered. Nuclear bombs are getting dropped on Vulcan. Vulcan is like priority number one. <laughs> I need to save these three Terminator shoots. No, I think there's more than that. But man, it regardless, felt like three, there's only three salamanders alive. I'm pretty sure, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, it's it's a story. Regardless, Puerto Rabo already has the fucking cannons that the lion gave him. <laughs> So it really doesn't matter. <laughs> that's fair, yeah. Yeah, so that's the unspoken. Interesting. And then we get... The seventh Serpent. Graham, the you Serpent. You son of a bitch. I haven't started this. It's long as fuck. Um, it's so here's the, the longest book. It's actually like half of this book. Yeah, it's, it's huge. So, here we go. The crew of the Sisyphium, which is the uh, ship from Andrew Exterminatus, consisting of a band of Iron Hands, Ravi Guard, and Salamander survivors, seek to strike a decisive blow against the Traitor Legions. Their target, a heavily defended Alpha Legion outpost, aided by some unlikely allies, they take their vengeance against the Sons of Alpharius. But, as with anything involved in the 20th Legion, 20th, what awaits legion. them on the station is not what they expect. And as the true architect of the battle reveals himself, the warriors of the Shattered Legions face a deadly opponent unlike any other. Dun, 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 dun. Dude, I'm actually, I'm kind of pumped for that one. I like that group of people. Like, I like Sherokin. Really well. I'm excited to see Sherokin. I like the Salamander Sniper Healer, dude. Yeah, maybe the Salamander start seeing in the dark again. That'd be cool. <laughs> Uh, they apparently then, forgot that ability. What's the? There was the other Iron Hand that was actually like kind of cool, the one that would like hang out with Sherikin. Yeah, the. Well, wasn't he like fucking nuts and like almost like blew up the ship, just experimenting with like the thrusters? No, different guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, this he was the, the guy... apothecary, right? No, the Salamander was the apothecary. 
Oh shit. <laughs> that that <laughs> makes sense. Remember at the beginning of Angel Exterminatus when Sure Kid was didn't read it. You definitely <laughs> read the I'm gonna kill you, man. I mean, you, you are you're trying. I'm up to here. I'm up to here, dude. In the beginning of Angel Exterminatus, when Shuriken attempted to kill Fulgrim. Yeah. He was the Iron Hand that was with Shuriken. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was also the Iron Hand that was with Shuriken in the other short story we have with Shuriken when they were like fighting on that like like Forge World, but it was like a trash planet or something. Yeah, it was weird. And they dropped a nuclear bomb and he like <laughs> opened like a, like a nuclear bomb protector circle. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah, it was super cool. We're like, okay. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> we should just get more of those. <laughs> Think about how much easier his fan would have been if they had a super shield. Yeah, like you think that like Loki would be like, oh yeah, it's fine. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> You're all just a bunch of idiots. This is easy. Okay. Well, I'm actually kind of excited for that. I, I do enjoy all of those characters. Maybe we'll get to see what's happened with the dude that's in the um heart lung thing. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's possible. Um, it's also possible that they forgot he exists. <laughs> it's great. <grim. laughs> uh, yeah, maybe it'll be good. I think, like, if I were to say which Shattered Legions group deserves a longer story, it would be that group, considering yeah. that they were, like, a main point and a main character set in a, a major book. Yeah, I agree. And this is, I mean, it's a full on novella. So, yeah. Maybe some things get wrapped up. That'd be neat. And then we have one more story, also by Graham. We have two more. Two more. I have the either. What's left? What else is there? Hand elect. Okay. Let me pull that up real quick. Which one's next? Hand elect or the either? Hand elect. All right. Hand elect. Synopsis. Jabez Og, who we meet earlier in this book, he is a he was originally an Iron Father, which is like the main captains, and then he took a demotion and gave his position to Medusin. But it looks Shadrach like Shadrach Medusin? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yep. Story. Yeah, so but he travels to the forge world of Lilax. Whatever that is. Sounds familiar. You know, they kind of all sound familiar. That's true. Uh, let's see. I'll just look up Little Axe real quick because I'm not yeah, sure. I'll, you read it. I'll look up Little Axe. Well, that, that was it. Oh, that, that was all they gave me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Little Axe, uh, Forge World that sided with the Loyalist and the Horus Heresy. Cool. It's from the Lex Canum. Not the wiki. <laughs> Not the wiki. I don't trust the wiki no more, you lying sack of shit. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Maybe that'll be good. I have no idea. There's, like, nothing to go off on that. Like, he's going to a forge world. Maybe they're out of metal for hands. <laughs> I mean, it's Chris Rate, so he always writes good shit. So I'm going to assume it's a decent one. Yeah. Jabez Og seemed like a naturally decent character. Because mm -hmm. in like the beginning, he's the one that's like, man, Medusa actually makes sense. Maybe he should be my fucking position because I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah. Then so you got the ether. Yeah, the ether. Uh, let's see. This is Captain Tabolt Mar of the Sons of Horus, so often overlooked by his more glory hungry brethren, returns to his legion in triumph. However, his boasts of having slain the infamous Iron Hands war leader. Shadrach Medusa soon fall flat when he learns of the recent assassination attempt on Horus himself. Gathering his forces upon the conquered world of Dwell, Mar returns to battle against the Shattered Legions, determined to earn his rightful place in history. Well, oh. that seems like a spoiler. <laughs> um, especially since this entire book has been hyping up Shadrach. Am I surprised? Not at all. Not like I'm also not surprised, but at the same time, like, so do the 
Iron Hands just go back to like a council? Because they were like, yeah, this guy should lead us. And then they're like, well, maybe we'll just go back to suck each other's dicks. Maybe maybe he won't kill Shadrach Medusa. Maybe it'll be like, just kidding, I'm alive. But like, how shitty would that be? It's like, let's introduce Shadrach Medusa. They put him in a dreadnought. Like, there we go. That's a fucking, that's a goddamn Iron Father if I've ever seen one. I feel like this is a big Grant McNeil thing. Where like <laughs> you, you kind of have Dan, Dan Rat's a cool character. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start the short story collection off with introducing Shadrach Medusin. Shadrach Medusin's a real cool guy. Here's all this stuff about him, and then you even have like who, who was it? Is it yeah? Chris Wright writes about it. There's another Shadrach Medusin one right? brought in like several times, like almost like every story will like mention him. Yeah. And Graham's like, doesn't even show it. He's just like, he died. <laughs> <laughs> and Tiber Moore, Tybolt Moore, that we Dude. all remember super, super well. Is remember? Useful. I wrote about Tybolt Moore in False Gods. Were you guys paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> this makes me also wonder if this assassination attempt is the assassination attempt from Nemesis or if it's the assass- assassination attempt from vengeful spirit which really wasn't one because they're like oh let's just mark the ship with fucking crowns or if it's the assassination attempt in wolf spade oh yeah oh was that an assassination attempt or more of fucking lehman russ and oh, i'm coming i'm gonna smash your head i don't know i mean i can like, see it being that <laughs> the concept of assassination is like what is assassination i find it feels sneak sneak <laughs> it requires sneaking around because like when you find like if a political person gets killed regardless of whether or not the person's sneaking it's an assassination <laughs> is right? it though i mean like what was the last like big assassination right like jfk like they called that and did you have a sniper that's pretty assassiny well- yeah, I'm, I understand that that's a sassy, but I'm saying, like, if you have a situation where you have, like, a politician, right, and they're just chilling out, and then you come up and you say, hey, <laughs> I'm going to kill you, and then you kill them, that would be an assassination. There's not oh. a lot of sneakiness about that. Assassination. I think, oh, I think it's this. just, I think it's just <laughs> murder, but you're popular. Listen to the dictionary definition. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. The action of assassinating someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that, that adds up. Thanks, Webster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I guess it's just murdering. I don't know. Let's see, what qualifies assassination? Assassination, the murder of a public figure. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so. And then you have to wonder, like, if someone dies in war, is it murder, right? So if, like, someone dies in battle would you consider that an assassination if they're like a war leader like i don't know i would just say the dude died but he got defeated yeah <laughs> that's an so idea. you want to reveal here what the second half of the episode is going to be yeah we'll so into that. yep so what is coming up next for all of you lovely people is we have some discord listeners coming on mm-hmm. um we are just going to kind of open up to like a Q&A slash like shoot the shit type of thing. Should be fun. Um, yep, just to kind of introduce you guys to more members of the community, give opportunities for members of the community to take part in the podcast, which is always cool. Um, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so check it out. It's fun. And well, you'll hear the rest of our episode in like a second. So yep. have a good one, guys. Are you ready? All right. So we are gathered by our friends from the Discord. And if you ever want to be on the episodes with us, join the fucking Discord. So we must start off with the infamous, the one and only, train wreck. Choo choo, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> I was, uh, <laughs> I was so scared when uh, Dylan said the trailer was going to come on. I was like, we have to put some sort of crazy, like, um, clickbait title on this episode. Like, oh, no. <laughs> train wreck does what? <laughs> NSFW. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> we down. also are joined by one of our uh, community leaders here. We have Raptor um, on our Discord. He kind of runs a few of the movie nights that we have, which is super awesome. Haven't been to one yet, which is really unfortunate. It's always during the times that we record. Yeah. Yeah. Timing just thrown out that way. Hi, guys. Nice chatting with you. Yeah, we're excited to have you guys. Um, Raptor, if you want to go ahead and just tell people about your movie night and see if they just gather some more yes. interest for future listeners. So on the Discord, I run a movie night every Friday at midnight CET, 6 p.m. EST. So whenever possible, we gather around and I stream a movie, usually some older ones last week. We stream Smoking Aces. This week we, we pet labor the movie. So we do a wide variety of them. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool. I've been to one. It was fun. Actually, I've been to a couple. I had to leave one early, though. Surprised you didn't go to the thing. Really? Oh. Well, look, I, yeah. didn't want to, I didn't want you guys to get see me all turned on. So <laughs> I figured it was better if I wasn't there. <laughs> see it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> train wreck. I already know the answer to this, but maybe everyone doesn't know who has been listening. But I'm going to ask two questions of both you guys to kind of let the audience get to know you a little bit inside the Warhammer sphere. So, train wreck. What is your favorite legion? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Imperial fist. Imperial. So, why the Imperial fists? Uh, they're the most soldier-like legion. Um, I also, uh, when I got into the old, uh, uh, real-time strategy game of, uh, Age of Empires, um, I would literally build a wall and then build a wall closer to the enemy and then build another wall closer to the enemy. And so, Hey, I just, just they really spoke to you. Holy shit. <laughs> and then I started reading about these Imperial fists. And I was like, they build walls too. <laughs> shit. I mean, I thought I was the genius. <laughs> I know. Oh, <laughs> so that's, that's how I got into it. I had no idea that you played Age of Empires. I loved that game when I was younger. I, and by, the way I did it was I was so upset whenever I had the enemy attack me. I'm like, I just want to build a big city right now. Like, get away yes. from me. <laughs> it's like trying to tell the computer, no rush games. Come on, let me build. Build the walls. You can come in and kill me after. I just want a really cool picture. You just yeah, my goal. make my huge army, and then you can come. <laughs> exactly. exactly. My goal was to not lose one dude and just kill him with, like, the towers. Just there you go. Shooting That's with arrows cool. and shit. Raptor, how about you? Probably the Alpha Legion. I just love their use of mortals and the whole espionage game. And you never know what they're up to. I agree. We got and like as a, always, information <laughs> is king. We have like a almost like anti battle right here. We have the Imperial Fist, we have the Alpha Legion. It's like I think we read this book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We know how it ends. All right, motherfuckers. Yeah. Affairs yeah. being alive, question mark? <laughs> Don't you start with me. <laughs> we know Dorn doesn't listen to anyone. <laughs> no, he does not. Dorn took a nap for like three-fourths of that book floating through space, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was all part of the scheme. He out-alpha the Alpha Legion. Oh, so because he is part of the Alpha Legion. That's the oh, Is Dorn a fairest? Right, is it. this the confirmation? <laughs> All right, you guys, fucking whatever. <laughs> you knew this was coming. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so the second that, question, good follow-up then, is what is your favorite novel, of course, Heresy, that you've read? Uh, see, I would normally say Praetorian of Dorne, but I actually didn't like it the first time. I liked it the second time because I thought it was going to be an uh, Imperial Fist book, but it's actually an Alpha Legion book. Um, I would have to say... Master of Mankind is up there uh, in First Heretic. Sweet. Yeah, Master of Mankind is like the greatest book in the Horus Heresy. It was good. Dylan ranks, <laughs> it, like, Dylan ranks it like 16th. I'm like, it was yeah, no, I <laughs> It's nice for background lore. Yeah, and absolutely. You know the, the ruling body of Terra. For me, yeah. I probably I'd say Path of Heaven. I love the storyline. I think Shiban has a great character arc. And there are also some great human characters in it. Yeah, I always find that, like, 
books with more human characters I'm more interested in because I find it hard to relate to just like the starties going crazy all the time and making really poor tactical decisions. Well, and see right there, that's why I like Fafner Ron so much. And you'll see it when you guys get to the Siege of Terror. Because it's he's like a space I remember, wolf. he's not a space wolf. <laughs> <laughs> he's an imperial wolf. <laughs> but you, you'll find out when you get to the Siege of Terror, it's like Okay, the, that guy makes more sense because the Sigismund guy is a fucking nut job. The Sigismund is nuts. <laughs> All of them are nuts. You gotta be nuts to even be a part of the part of the league. They're shooting bolt of forty I mean, grenade launchers at me. I'm gonna charge him with a sword. Watch this. What do you think is gonna happen if you give a twelve year old a super gun in armor? <laughs> it goes bad, yeah. Especially when you most of the time you're recruiting from just. You're not worried about the morals. You're worried about how strong they are. All of a sudden, you've got a lot of really messed up people running around. And how yeah. bad seven-year-old kids can kill other seven-year-old kids. Why <laughs> chain to other seven-year-old kids? I think the only religion that actually educates the kids are the Ultramarines. They have actual colleges for that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they would. Fucking cultured bastards. So, uh, Trainwreck, you bring up, you message me personally all the time on the Discord, and I avoid it. I avoid it as much as possible. Yeah, I don't know why. (laughs) I'm trying to stalk you. You know, I feel like you're ghosting me all the time. At least Dylan has the, you know, he'll actually say, hey, I'm working, or hey, what's up? (laughs) Yeah, fuck off. (laughs) I'm so bad. I'm just really bad at communicating. Dylan messaged me yesterday, last night, and asked, like, what time we should start this. And I didn't message him back till like 2 p.m. this afternoon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, now I don't take that much offense. Yeah. So you get used to it. You you message me all the time, and you always bring up things that like we miss, and you, you're it's like a point of frustration. Oh, okay. Come on. Were you, were you want to hear it now from After Mankind? My question is, what has been the <laughs> biggest thing that we've missed so far that you think we should have brought up? Uh, and, and all of the recordings? Yeah. Well, oh, I mean, geez. there's got to be something that just, like, cozy. you like, man, I can't believe they didn't talk. These fucking it. idiots. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's always something. I, I, there's always something. Like, um, for example, when in Master of Mankind, you didn't mention that when E shows up, he comes in with a whole ghost army from, like, Lord of the Rings, and oh, one yeah. of the ghosts is, like, freaking Ferris Manus. I mean... Kind of important in that part of the book. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's a whole. Honestly, that's the, I don't even remember that happening. Yeah, it was the. <laughs> it was straight out of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's like the Legion of the Damned, right? Is that what's supposed yeah. to be? Yeah, Some, something like that. Also and, the whole and not knowing what dragon down is. in the end. Sorry, Raptor. I stepped on. Go ahead. Up. Go ahead. How did you not know Dragon? How did you not recognize Dragon? Really? I don't play uh, Abaddon. Like, I don't care about Abaddon. And he's the one with the sword, right? Yes, he is. But uh, yeah. it's when the uh, the custodian that's in the freaking, uh, the dreadnought, when the, he's like, hey, he's screaming this, right? He's, like, oh, he's not screaming this, he's screaming his name. It's called yeah. Drachnian. I was like, oh, shit. So. Yeah, I don't like Abaddon, so I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Cool sword. He, I mean, Abaddon's cool until they gave him face caps, and now I don't even like his character. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fail my Abaddon doesn't even get those. Raptor, how about you? Is there ever been something you're listening to us and you're like, why have you not? Why are you not talking about this? Yeah, um, most of the time when you miss something, I just let it go because I know I have bad memory. But I usually remember for the last book only. And the last one is we discussed on Discord. You forgot that the emperor literally sits down on the chair at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> it's like I marked it as my favorite book. I feel like we have to read. <laughs> okay, and hey, I gotta ask this: Where did you get the number of ten thousand souls a day? That is so erroneous. It's not even funny. Yeah, it's true. It's because um, remember, like in that book, when she goes up. Um, She's being strapped into the coffin and she looks over and she sees that uh, for every person, there's nine empty coffins in between them. 
Um, so I yeah. think it is like, uh, I think it is 10,000 souls a day now. So on every, you started. Um, yeah, I'm, okay. So check this out. Every Warhammer 40 K book starts with this in the, in the 41st millennium for more than a hundred centuries, the emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of earth. His mass, he is the master. Right of, okay. <laughs> let's go to this freaking line where it says he is the carrion Lord of the Imperium for whom a thousand souls are sacrificed every day. Where did you yeah. get 10,000? The wiki. Wiki. Oh, <laughs> and say it. I, I, Rapper, you were right. It is the wiki. <laughs> <laughs> also, the whole Paras nonsense for the Dark Age humanity navigation. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Yeah, they used the pharaohs. No, they didn't. So why why did we have to choose the two that were just ripping on us? <laughs> you know, you asked it. It's you had it coming to you. Fair enough. <laughs> so so there is since Gavin, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Varela's gonna lose his mind. He's like, you can go to the wikis. Everybody goes to the wikis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I've got to like. Find something. I'm gonna find something. I'm gonna prove you Go right at some point. <laughs> okay. Not now, but I will eventually. I'm gonna contact. Once you start drinking. I'm gonna contact GW. Hey, just a suggestion. Your next book, put thousands. <laughs> That'd be a way fun. I'm <laughs> so, sure there's also, a in somewhere. Dylan, if you think about it, if, if a, you have a um, imperium of a million worlds. And let's say the average is 7 billion people. It wouldn't be hard to come up with a thousand. You know, I, I mean, if you just do the math, if there's a that's million a times 7 uh, million just, people. Look, if there was 10,000, though, that's very sketchy. A thousand is a little not, bit more doable. That's why it's not 10,000. A little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing here, I'm seeing 25,000. <laughs> a three <laughs> billion a day? <laughs> A logistical cool. nightmare. I'm just going to edit the wiki real quick. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> See, you fucking idiots. It's right here. Prove it. You know, a lot of people wouldn't even notice if you edited it. <laughs> exactly. just, yeah, this is true. They just continue to believe it. Maybe if I edit it, you know, Games Workshop read it and be like, that's a good idea. <laughs> this guy's a genius. So, you numbers. know, <laughs> some of the, the offers actually look at the lexicon and if they need quick facts. Oh, I'm sure oh, they do. Graham doesn't. I can guarantee that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to have this random world leader punch through, not freaking Ceramite, but Aramite, right through this freaking custode's chest. Go. You know, it's not like he Googled in the lexicon. Who's stronger, Space Marines or Custodes? <laughs> 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 in all fairness, he should know this. I mean, even in Shattered Legions, I don't know if you got to the, to his stories yet but it gets kind of comic booky oh Graham's his, yeah his with Charles the and one. all of them what are the ones that he did the se the separate beneath I believe it's called yeah it's it's my next one to read it's super fucking long so I was like I'm not starting this because I got to it last night oh yeah, yeah I like am... 150 pages <laughs> <laughs> that's right i, I remember I, I messaged bill and i talked to him when when i found out i was looking through shadow leaders like hey good news it's 11 stories they're all under 100 pages no you're like they're all between like 30 to 60 pages yeah and then Very i looked <laughs> i looked again and i realized that one of them i was off by 100 <laughs> like the, the first <laughs> number was off <laughs> i was like Oh, it turns out there is one, and guess who it's by? <laughs> I just go, is it a prequel? Graham. Is it a prequel to the prequel to Vengeful Spirits? Oh, no, I it's hope a sequel so. to a sequel to <laughs> another Isn't it connected to Angel Exterminatus? Question. Yeah. Okay. I figured well, it's it was the same, well, the same guys. Then Dylan, you can't comment on it because you didn't finish the book. The only book he hasn't finished. <laughs> <laughs> Look, write better. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that one was that one was hard. That was I hard enjoyed Puerto Rabo. I had... enjoyed it until they got to like they went through like the webway, and I was like, 
this book's still going. Holy fuck. And they started it, it doing weird things to Fulgrim. And I was like, wow, this is... Shove more things in there. Come on. <laughs> oh, how else is Horus going to get the Fulgrim spear? You yeah. Know? <laughs> this is true. He needs magnets, not shards. <laughs> <laughs> Just shove a bunch of magnets up his ass and then Horus will summon him. Yeah, uh, you guys are lucky. You have this one, Shadow Legions, then you have the uh, the Salamanders, whatever the hell that one was called. Yeah, Old Earth. Uh, oh, no, Old Earth is the is not. That's the continuation yeah, like with Scott and Eric. Born, Born of Flame. flame. Born, of, Born flame. of Flame. I was close. Yes. Something of Fire. Born of Flame. Same shit. Born, Born of Flame. Oh, and so, I can't wait for you guys to read Talarn because you guys are way off. I'm excited. Don't, don't spoil it, I think. You're, I'm like not the, you're the master of spoiling stuff. Bullshit. Every, every, time, every time you're like, hey, have you read this? I'm like, no. You're like, okay, well, here's an article. It's not spoiling anything, and it, like, goes over the entire novel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I so everyone dies. <laughs> hey, yeah, but I do so leave many off. times on the Discord whenever Trainer X writes something, and it's uh, actual spoilers. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I do lead off with, where are you at? That's true. Have you read this part? I mean, yeah, sometimes I'm like, <laughs> have you seen this part that's like super cool? And I'm like, uh, well, not, not now yet, I actually. Know. It's like we're <laughs> reading Fulgrim, you know? He's like, did you get to the part where Fulgrim cut Paris Man's head off? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm on chapter one. But it's like, not that bad. <laughs> that. <laughs> I just, just wanted to get a gauge of where you were at. <laughs> All right, so how about this? Let me ask you guys this question. Perpetuals. Mm -hmm. Are they adding to the story, taking away from the story, or they're eh, they're just in there? I think it's yet to be seen. As of right now, I'm not gonna ruin it. Have you read? No, just kidding. <laughs> um <laughs> I know so the perpetuals are definitely adding to the story. The question is how much, right? Because right at right now, at this point, all it is is a cool little side story that isn't really amounting to much. Um, but you know, knowing all Pearson, but the name and what that equates to in the um, the end of the Horse Heresy, the question is like, how does that stack up? Like, what is is that? Uh, the story was super awesome during like Falcon Lives. That was a super awesome storyline, and then it yeah, just, it's about yeah, yeah. So Are there it was like perpetuals. Yeah. Oh, uh, is John? really a cool perpetual i don't know he was started off cool now it's kind of getting a little bitchy but yeah. uh the one dude from vulcan lives is pretty cool damon I damon, damon damon prentice yeah yeah he was cool i like that he has the, the shuriken pistols that's pretty badass yeah those are fucking cool um i'm curious on what he did with the um the word bears bitch i can't think of her name but was she, she actually a perpetual no. She was, she she is, was yeah. She is now, yes. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was trying to leave some ambiguity there. Come on, guys. Well, well we've I'm already pretty covered sure that he one. was like, yo, bitch, you're perpetual now. Join us. <laughs> yeah, I think that's exactly what he said. <laughs> like word for word. <laughs> yeah, but John's not a perpetual anymore. Yeah, because he got uh he got some shards stabbed into him at the yeah. wrong times. He, <laughs> he he got killed and then got rezzed one last time. So, like, the Emperor was on a planet one time, and he used lightning to strike sand, and then thousands of late, years later, someone dug it up, took a piece of it, and John got stabbed in the wrong place with it, and now, but it also went through Vulcan, and now he's no longer perpetual. That's the yeah. storyline that we follow, guys. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I need the calculus guy. This doesn't make All right, sense. so, I did ask this on the Discord, but what do you guys think? How does Vulcan come back? Is he, like new guy respawn just falls out of the sky like jumanji or is he slowly terminator 2 kind of going back together and popping back up i always imagine it like reconstitution the all the parts come back together okay what well, do like if his arm falls off like the arm will just like come back or and not regrow is that what you're saying yeah i always imagine it like that hmm I imagine, well, he, like, whatever's, like, left of him, like, say, like, he gets burned up of for, like, one finger. Like, he just grows back from that finger. 
goes backwards. So it goes yeah. from a finger to a knuckle to a hand to a wrist to a forearm. Yeah. I because I mean like interesting. What, whenever Ka Kurz was fucking lit his ass on fire and he like disintegrated, like I'm assuming like, something must have been left. Like maybe his fucking ashes just were like and unevolved or revolved. I don't know. Well, did he like the... throw him out into space one time? Like put yeah. him in the freaking airlock and sucked his ass out. He also threw him in a turbine engine. That's cool, actually. Yeah. Now that I remember that. Conrad Curtis is such a monster. That <laughs> was like guy. that was great. <laughs> he is the MVP for the traitors. Yeah. yeah. He and Puerto Rabo. <laughs> uh, Puerto Rabo first, then Curse. I don't know. But per- we'll see. Per- Puerto Rabo's yet to prove it to me, but we'll see. Yeah, I, so I you're right. I'm looking it. I'm looking backwards at it. You're right. Right so, now he's Puerto Rabo's a bitch. This motherfucker's trying to spoil things. Puerto Rabo's <laughs> just shoving shards <laughs> through people's bodies and stuff. <laughs> Now, and then taken off. Yeah. Through, oh, I'm going to go through that black hole. Sir, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, I'm bored. <laughs> so I think the way Vulcan's reanimation works, because we never actually see it. We never see it. Anytime yes, we do. that. Yes, we do. Well, do we see it? We saw a Master of Mankind. Uh, no. Uh, in. Um, what book were you reading? Not Master of oh, Mankind. Yeah. Uh, the fucking uh, one where they. All are on a uh, McCree. On McCrack, yes. McCrack. So that's where you see it. Remember, he gets shot in the face with the shuriken pistols, and then dies, and then comes back, just pops back up, and then yeah. he gets thrown on that like rampart with the, like the the stake going through him, and he breaks his back on it, and then all of a sudden he just st- sits back up and walks off of it. So he does. We do see that. Yeah, I think like the way I, I'm imagining it it working is the fact that <clears throat> it's like his warp power. Right? I mean, perpetualism is that way. So I think your essence is just in the warp, and then you're mm-hmm. just gonna pop back into existence that way. Like when, when he went, was when he crashed with McCrag, you know, he had body parts left. They were all burnt. Yeah. But what happened was like they had him in that cryo chamber, and then like in a second, this guy was like, "Oh, what's going on there?" He looks, and it's Vulcan. Like Vulcan's just alive and completely fine. So there yeah. wasn't like a transition phase. It was like you're gone. You're not gone anymore. I mean, if Magnus can change his form, whatever he feels like, anything is possible. That's true. What are your thoughts? Do you, are we wrong? Are you going to tell us? <laughs> nah, I, I always imagine it like Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen. Okay, well, that's yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. No, my, I, I don't know. There, so there's, in a future book, there is a scene with Vulcan in it. And... I'm going to stop you there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about this. <laughs> so, no, and I'll, I'll, I'll stop there, but I'll say, but it implies you, both Raptor. ways. <laughs> it, it implies both ways. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it would make a lot of sense that if it was something as small as, like, like uh, getting impaled, you know, okay, he dies, I guess, uh, and then it just heals up, you know. I would... I would <laughs> I think it's super interesting. If, like, if it does grow back, you know, just cut them right down the middle. You got two Vulcans. <laughs> this is true. I like it. Why haven't we thought about this? What if that's what happened to Alpharius and Almogon? That's how he repopulates the salamanders. From yeah, there's no left. way there's actually that many left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very surprised by that. Yeah. Oh. Well, guys, we're about at time. Is there anything else you guys want to go over? No, I'm good. By you, Raptor. Uh, that pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on Discord. Yeah, yeah. So going off that, join the fucking Discord. You find that pinned to our Twitter at Heresy Lodge. Email us at the Heresy Lodge at gmail.com. We're also on YouTube. I will give you the link if you ask for it. I'm too lazy to actually make one and throw it into the description. Uh, we do have merch too, so check that out. And Fridays, movie nights with Raptor over here. And then every day's well, every day is train different with train wreck. <laughs> you with train wreck. <laughs> you so get a would... special <laughs> welcome. Yes. Yeah, that's for sure. Welcome to the Thunderdome. <laughs> and make it's sure you like Imperial Fist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, guys. So that is it for our preview of Shattered Legions. Next week we'll be reviewing. 
this book some way <laughs> <laughs> yep and then we'll be back for our normal shit you guys have a good one yeah thank you for having us yes anytime i'm glad you guys came on oh yeah thank you guys